Uh, we have another question. Will that uh, the panels make the hot, the house hotter? Because if they get the hot from the, the heat from the sun, will the house get more uh, hot inside? Okay, that's a good question. So when an installer puts solar panels on your roof, there's actually a gap, usually of about half a foot, maybe, between the roof and the solar panels. And so that gap will insulate the heat collected by the panels and it won't transmit into your house. If anything, I would say your house might even be a little cooler because it'll be shaded by the panels. Okay, there's two more questions we didn't grab from the chat panel. One was, can solar um, power cells explode? Can they explode? And two, is there anything we can do to help our ozone? Okay, so the first question, will solar cells explode? They will not. I'm pretty sure they will not explode. Now, let's talk about some dangers of solar cells. When you're making electricity, there are forces involved that can hurt you. You can imagine if, you, if you've ever been told you're not supposed to stick things in electrical sockets because it will shock you. Or if you touch certain things that have power going through them, you'll feel a shock. The same thing will happen with solar panels. They produce power. And if you touch the metal around the solar panel, it could shock you. Now, if a solar panel has a certain kind of defect that causes a lot of heating in one place, I can see that maybe the panel might catch on fire. Maybe it'll get so hot that it will uh, spontaneously combust. But explosions, I, I don't think an explosion would happen. Now, the next question was about the ozone, right? So this is a much broader question than just solar, right? When we're talking about having uh, a way that we like to live our life, we like to have our iPhones, and we like to have our refrigerators and our electricity and our air conditioning, we have to have power coming from somewhere. Now, for the past 100 years, the majority of our power has been made by burning coal or burning gas or burning something. We have to stop burning things. If we burn less, we'll produce less smoke and we'll produce less carbon dioxide and we'll produce less materials that deplete our ozone. Does everybody know what the ozone layer does? The ozone layer protects us from harmful rays from the sun that don't even do work on a solar cell. UV light damages our skin. Solar cells can't use UV light. So even if we were to keep the ozone layer in place and block all the UV, solar cells would still work. But when we put gases into the sky that react with ozone, which by the way is O3, it's three oxygens bound together in a ring, that ozone will go away and all of a sudden we'll get more of that harmful radiation that causes skin cancer. What we can do to help with the ozone layer is to start using forms of power that don't produce smoke. Now it's hard for us as consumers that buy electricity from Pacific Gas and Electric or Georgia Power or other places like that because they're the ones who make the power. We don't tell them how to make power. They do it and they send it to us. We have to tell them we don't want them to make power from burning things. Maybe use solar or maybe use wind or hydroelectric or other things like that that are more renewable and use less um, fuel to produce electricity. That's how we can save the ozone. Okay, there's one last question. I told you the last one was the last one, but there's one last final one I don't want to forget. No problem. And that is, this is the real final last question. Um, how many volts does a small panel make? in a minute compared to a big one? Like, is there a difference? Okay. So now we're starting to get technical, right? We're gonna talk about uh, technical facts about solar cells. So I'm gonna talk about a silicon solar cell. Now a silicon solar cell is about this big and it can produce, when you're shining light on it, about 600 millivolts. What does that mean, right? We, we, don't, we don't think about this kind of thing all the time. But when we stitch solar cells together into a panel, the typical panel that you see on a roof will actually be made up of all of these 600 millivolt solar cells. And when you add solar cells together, you actually add the voltages. And so if I had 10 cells in a panel, I would have 10 times 600 millivolts or 6,000 millivolts, which is six volts, right? 
And if I keep continuing to grow the size of the panel, I'll continue to add to that voltage. If I had 100 cells, it would become 60 volts. If I had 1,000 cells, it would be 600 volts, right? And so you can see that that voltage increases as you increase the, um, the size of the panel. Now, voltage is not a time-based measurement. Voltage has to do with uh, when you shine light on the panel, you can instantly measure the voltage. If you stop shining light, it will no longer produce that voltage. Okay. Well, I want to, um, we do something when we do Zoom calls because everybody's muted. We applause sign language. So let's all give Dr. Cooper a round of applause. Yay! Yes, hands. And say thank you. And then yes. we're gonna yeah. we're going to zoom a scientist, my friend, uh, Dr. Jennings. Um, she is an expert in hearing, a woman of compassion. She figures out how to help other people hear better. Why can't they hear and how can she help fix it? So I hope you all will join that meeting. I will send an invite the same way that you got information um, for this meeting. Sorry, we are screaming in the background. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye to you all. And I hope you have a blessed day.